I would never have expected that changing this one single parameter can get you from that bread to this bread. Oven spring happens when you've done everything exactly right with your sourdough. In this video, I want to show you one parameter that can dramatically change whether you receive amazing oven spring or not. Now, how did this journey start? I've been working on an overnight high hydration recipe for you. I wanted to enable you to make the perfect sourdough while you sleep. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? You sleep and your dough ferments doing all the hard work for you. Win-win. Furthermore, you could do this while you leave to work and then have an amazing dough once you return. Now I wanted to develop a recipe for you using a relatively wet dough made overnight requiring no work after you mix the ingredients. I personally think that wet high hydration doughs are amazing, featuring a crispy crust and then really moist somewhat open crumb. The play of textures is just amazing. The dough is unfortunately a lot more tricky to handle as it's more sticky. But still, there had to be a way to make this possible. Based on the experiments I conducted, I would just mix together all the ingredients right from the start. It's cold now in Germany and then you can safely skip the autolysis, which is just mixing flour and water for an hour or so in advance. For long fermentations, this is not required. So I'm using 80 grams of sourdough starter, that's 20% in terms of baker's math, 320 grams of water, 80% in baker's math, 8 grams of salt, 2% in baker's math, I'm making two loaves, so I'm just multiplying that by two. That's where baker's math comes in very handy. Then afterwards you mix everything together. For an overnight bread, you want to create a lot of dough strength. I don't want to go too much into detail, but I made a video before on five great ways to create a lot of dough strength. Please check that out if you want to. You then extract a small sample of the dough to show you the fermentation progress. This really makes fermenting on point so easy. Well, then you go to bed and in the morning your sample has doubled in size and voila, you're ready to shape your bread. Now this sounds so easy and like a dream come true, but then I failed around 10 times. Now Master Yoda said the greatest teacher failure is. I thought, okay, I might have fermented too long. Then I also thought about maybe I didn't need enough for this dough. Overnight the gluten relaxes, making it impossible for my bread to have oven spring, so I thought. I went to my whiteboard and tried to come up with a plan. But even then, nope, whatever I tried, no oven spring. At least not in the way that I was used to. Well, and then I tried my regular sourdough recipe, which starts early in the morning, but suddenly I also only had mediocre oven spring. What has changed? Did I lose my mojo? <laughs> I recently did an experiment where I would test baking at a higher temperature initially. My sourdough had a little more oven spring. Since then I have always been baking at around 250 degrees Celsius at the start and then reduced the temperature to 230 degrees Celsius. Before I would have always preheated the oven to the max for around 30 minutes and then bake at a steady 230 degrees Celsius. The 30 minutes would always give me 230 degrees Celsius inside of my Dutch oven. Now the 30 minutes of preheating my oven in the past has worked excellent, but I changed another thing. I had to clean my pizza stone, it wasn't looking so good anymore and then I decided okay I don't need it for now, I'm gonna leave it away. Before I would always preheat my Dutch oven sitting right on my pizza stone. So of course if you have a pizza stone below, that could explain why the Dutch oven didn't heat up as fast. In comparison to now, when I don't have the pizza stone, the Dutch oven heats up way faster. And then I also noticed that when doing my baking temperature experiment, I measured the temperature on top of my Dutch oven. I should have measured the temperature inside of the Dutch oven. So both things combined, I thought, okay, maybe my Dutch oven is too hot. Maybe the crust forms too quickly, preventing my dough from rising. The reason why you want to use a Dutch oven is because it traps all that steam. That dough sauna really makes sure that no crust forms and you will get that oven spring. But yeah, maybe there's a limit to temperature. You want your Dutch oven to be hot to get oven spring, but at the same time you also don't want it to be too hot. Then I asked all of you amazing hobby bakers on YouTube. Most of you bake at around 230 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. So I tried going back to what I've previously done, baking at 230 degrees Celsius all the time. And boom, I really got an amazing sourdough. I was really face palming myself. I was so frustrated with myself. But then I thought, okay, maybe this was just luck. The other option was that I was actually onto something. So I wanted to do another A-B test to verify what I found and show you. See for yourself, I was really surprised. So I have been preheating my oven for around 30 minutes, just like I normally do. 
and this is now at 270 degrees Celsius roughly. I place the small sample inside of the Dutch oven and now let's see what I bake when using my regular temperature that I always do. Now I'm changing from fan to upper and bottom heat and I'm reducing from 270 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. And it's going to be baking like this for around 25 minutes. 25 minutes are over and let's check what's hiding inside of the Dutch oven. <laughs> nice! But as you see, not that much of an ear development. So let this finish baking for another 15 minutes or so until the crust has the perfect color. And then let's have a look at the other bread. And now for the second bread, I'm gonna be opting for the 240 degrees Celsius, pretty much the middle of all the recommendations that you gave me. And let's have a look. Half time for the next bread. Let's check what happened with this one. Oh, well, I had hoped for better oven spring. I was very, very sad. <laughs> but, the last time I baked with 230 degrees Celsius, it was way better. So, I didn't want to give up. Failure is the greatest teacher. I want to repeat the experiment one more time and show you. And please don't worry, there's gonna be an amazing happy end incoming. And next attempt, Dutch oven has been preheated and just look at that temperature. I don't know, my oven just heats so fast. I'm gonna be loading the first bread inside now. Back to upper bottom heat and I'm lowering the temperature to 250 degrees Celsius just like the last time. And bread number one coming out of the oven. <laughs> nice and as you can see we didn't get that much of an ear. I'm gonna finish this baking this now and then let's check the other one. Very interesting so I'm now preheating the oven to 230 degrees and I set the oven directly to 230 degrees and it has been almost an hour and the oven is still not there. This just shows how much you have to test your own oven. Every oven is unique and don't trust the controls that you have on your oven. Very important, you need to test this on your own. Okay, Dutch oven is ready. It's gonna cool down a little bit. Time to load the second bread. This time I'm going for just 230 degrees Celsius. So same thing again, upper bottom heat, and this time at 230 degrees Celsius. And dough number two, 25 minutes past. <laughs> Look at that, we got so much better oven spring. I'm gonna finish baking this and then let's compare the two results. Number one, not that nice oven spring. But look at number two. <laughs> what an incredible looking ear. Now let's compare the surface. You see that? Not as many blisters on the one which we baked hotter initially. And just look at those nice looking blisters right there on the crust. This one is looking so much better. I would expect the bottom to look a little bit darker on the one which we baked at a hotter temperature but it's not that much darker. I would say it's quite similar. I would never have expected that changing this one single parameter can get you from that bread to this bread. Yeah, really interesting how the bread looks so much different. The one which we baked at a lower temperature definitely has more oven spring, nicer blisters overall to me. This is the perfect sourdough bread. That ear that we got here, it's gonna add so much incredible flavor and texture the moment you take a bite. This one, it's looking nice and it's probably also tasting amazing, but still, it doesn't have that visual wow effect to it. 
So overall, I think there are three things to be learned from this experiment. Number one, too hot doesn't necessarily get you more oven spring. At some point, the crust forms too quickly. And this is something you don't want. You don't want the crust to form too quickly. You want your bread to be able to grow upwards inside of the oven. An oven with a built-in steam functionality might behave different. But for the Dutch oven, you don't want to go too hot. Number two, don't just follow a suggestion to preheat your oven for X minutes. Every oven is truly unique. The small change I did by just removing the stone had such a dramatic impact. So you want to be using a thermometer to make sure that you don't heat your oven for too much or too little. And number three, which I learned the hard way before, don't just trust the heating indicator of your oven. If your oven says it's 230 degrees Celsius, it might easily be 250 or 210. This is something that you have to experiment with with your own oven. I think we also need to do further research, or maybe you can help me there. What about adding an ice cube to the Dutch oven to give it additional steam? Another thought I had is, why not just preheat the lower part of the Dutch oven? This way your dough would be shielded from the high heat coming from the top. Furthermore, how is this dependent on the type of bread that you're baking? What about a stiffer dough? In this case, this dough is relatively high in hydration. What are the differences? If you have ideas for further experiments, further research, please do drop a comment in the comment section. I would truly appreciate that. Now, let's cut those open and have a look at the crumb. Bread number one, beautiful crumb. Are you excited? I am. Wow. Look at that amazing crumb. Let's compare them next to each other. I noticed quite a few large pockets of air here towards the top on the one which we had in the hotter Dutch oven, which is this one. And this is typically a sign that the crust formed too quickly and then the pockets of air just collapse into gigantic ones. Whereas here, I would say that everything is a little bit better distributed. Hmm. Lovely soft texture. The texture from both of them is amazing. So taste-wise, they're likely going to be very, very similar, except that we have this additional crunch factor coming right from that ear. And this is definitely missing on this bread. Mm. This is so good. Now there's one thing left for me and that is eating all of this bread and feeling very guilty afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. As always, happy baking and may the gluten be with you.